Hello, my name's Peter Bolton. I'm the chairman here at Bolton Surgical, and it's also my pleasure to be involved in the research and development of surgical instruments here at Bolton's. I'm going to introduce a range to you now, which is Bolton's niche product, the colorectal range. Before I do that, I'd like to go into the history of the colorectal range and how Bolton's actually got involved with it. As we may or may not know, colorectal sur surgery was actually done under general surgery. About 14 years ago, we were called into our local hospital to see the senior colorectal surgeon there because they were having problems. Working deep in the pelvis with very short instruments was giving them immense problems. So I went into theatres to watch these procedures and uh, to ask if we could give a solution to their problems regarding working deep in the pelvis. So after around four or five weeks, I developed a range of instruments, took them back to the hospital, they used them in surgery, and uh, to everyone's delight, the colorectal surgery, the colorectal range of surgical instruments was actually born. I'd now like to introduce you to the colorectal range. Um, if you look at the table, you can see a vast array of colorectal instruments. Um, very difficult to show everything in this particular showing, but uh, it will give you some idea on the vast array of instrumentation that's available through the colorectal banner. Starting with uh, needle holders, extra long needle holders, uh, like the Finichetto. Uh, when we're manufacturing instruments like this of extra length, uh, I suppose the customer would think, well, what is the compromise? But in actual fact, every endeavour is made to make sure that the instrument performs as well as a short instrument. So everything is scaled up in size and strength, so there is no uh, compromise regarding the quality and balance of these instruments. Uh, moving on to the uh, larger needle holder, the Mayo needle holder, which has the, the chunky jaw, Again, with the tungsten carbide, uh, distinctive gold bows. Moving on to the DeBakey needle holder, same again, tungsten carbide, distinctive gold bows, nice fine jaws. Different styles of needle holders we have here. Uh, this is the Strats, a de unique design in its own right with its curved shank, its angled jaw, uh, in, in both, both laterally and post-laterally. Then we have the Norton Morgan double action needle holder, the compound action needle holder. Uh, the beauty about this is it gives the, uh, the clinician far more control uh, due to the amount of opening uh, with the four index finger and thumb. Uh, as you can see the amount of movement that you get from this type of instrument as opposed to a conventional instrument. So by far this type of instrument is, uh, is well, very well received. This is a round bodied needle holder. There again, tungsten carbide. It's got an angled jaw as well. It works on one ratchet, a press release, so you press it once to lock it and once again to undo the device. Uh, this instrument is suitable for transanal and endoanal repair. With that, we'll move on to scissors now. We've got a tungsten carbide metzen bomb of 33 centimeters. Uh, there again, with its distinctive gold bows and tungsten carbide and satin finish. This is a standard curvature scissor. We do extra curved scissors, uh, as in this scissor I'm going to show you now, which is a black bow scissor which as we know is the uh, serrated edge scissor. But if you look at the curvature on that as opposed to the last scissor, this is purely surgeon's preference, but uh, these are available uh, through the catalog and through the website, as you can see. We could do heavier scissors like the Golliger scissor, as you can see the difference between that scissor and that scissor. You can see the difference in weights. There again, it's surgeon's preference. The Golliger scissor has been around many, many years and uh, it's obviously named after the chap that actually invented them, which was uh, Mr. Golliger back in 1930s, I understand. Move on now to the Metzenbaum scissor. This one's even longer. This is 36 centimeters. 
Uh, extra curve once again, as you can see. Uh, on these scissors, we actually use um, a cosmetic finish called a satin finish, which finishes there and a polish. We think this is more cosmetically appealing to the eye. Um, obviously, an instrument has to function well, but we also like it to look good also. And obviously, uh, when you're opening a package of new instruments and you see something looks really nice, obviously it's a very good selling point and Boltons take pride in this particular presentation. This scissor is a fistula scissor. Um, you can actually see the tip of the scissor. Um, it, it, it's sort of a tenotomy type end, very narrow for very fine dissection with the distinctive finish again, the, the half satin and, and the polish finish on that there. Um, moving on now to, uh, to tissue forceps, the Babcock, Babcock tissue forcep there again with the double, double action jaw giving great movement to the, uh, to the working end with little movement here to, on, on the bows. So you can see great benefits to that particular forcep. Moving on to the conventional mixed Alehi, very fine dissecting forcep. Um, as you can see, really slim all the way down. Um, and also a preferred instrument uh, in, in the colorectal range uh, for very fine dissection modes. Uh, box standard hemostat uh, with extra curve again, there you are. Uh, uh, Spencer Wells type forcep. There again, half satin and, uh, and the half polish, which we think is very pleasing to the eye. Uh, move on to bowel clamps now. Uh, this is the Rizzano clamp uh, with the atraumatic jaw. Atraumatic, of course, means non-trauma. Uh, so it's not a crushing clamp, it's just a, it's just a clamp uh, for sealing off the bowel, but doesn't actually cause any, uh, any undue damage. 90 degree jaw on that. Uh, this is called the seed house clamp, a bit, a bit heavier in stature. Uh, this is available in different size jaws from 60 millimeters down to around 30 millimeters. This, this clamp is also available in, this is a right clamp, it's also available in a left clamp. So this again is down to surgeon's preference. Um, the famous Doyen non-crushing clamp again with the DeBakey jaw, very steep curvature but uh, all part of the clamp family. Uh, moving on to the purse string forceps, we have two purse strings here. Uh, both got the same size jaws, but obviously different lengths. Very popular forcep these days. Um, I'd like to talk about um, a recent development of Bolton's, um, which is the flexible uh, fistula probe. The old probes, as you probably know, are the Lockhart Mummery probes, which were fine in their day. Um, you've got a straight one, a 45 degree one, a 90 degree one, and a retrograde. And these, 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 were, these were very good in, in the day, but the trouble is they weren't flexible. So it was very difficult to, to, to dissect some of the fistula tracks with these. So what Bolton's did, we came up with one particular probe that would do the whole range. As you can see, these are very malleable. They bend to any tract. They have a lovely large seat on carrying hole in the end there. A lovely atraumatic tip, which is ideal for dissecting through the fistula tract. These come pre-sterile and are single use. I'd now like to talk about Abdominal retractors. Obviously, abdominal retraction is a very big thing, and we have a host of retractors here to uh, to suit all all particular tastes uh, for the colorectal surgeon. Uh, the first one is the the Balfour retractor. The Balfour retractor, very popular, it's been around many many years, and probably will be around the same amount of years. Uh, this is the interchangeable. It has two post-lateral blades. As you can see, a, the curved blade there, and then it has a 90 degree blade there, obviously for packing back the small bowel. Then we have these sets of interchangeable blades, which snap in very easily. It comes with four sets of blades. 
So all, you need, all the surgeon needs to do is assess the type of patient he has on the, on the table and then uh, uh, decide which uh, lateral blades that he thinks fit uh, for the patient and just snap them in place. As easy as that. It also has a locking device here which stops the retractor from actually retracting too. Um, this is a 33, a 30 spread, centimeter spread, so we've actually got the extra wide spread as well. I'll move on now to the uh, Finichetto retractor, the Burford Finichetto. Um, as we know, the Burford Finichetto is actually a, a rib spreader, but I have actually had the pleasure of seeing these being used in colorectal surgery. Um, the last time I saw these used, there was one placed that way and another one was placed that way. Uh, with the amount of leverage that you have on that rack, you can imagine the amount of retraction that you get from this particular faucet. Interchangeable uh, St. Mark's retractors is next up. Um, which the blade, you can have a multitude of four, five, six blades all different shapes, different sizes. This is just two we picked out. So what these actually do is they clip onto the handle and just tighten up with that screw and away you go into surgery. Uh, we recommend that you actually use two of these handles because uh, it's a shame to have six blades, five, six blades uh, on your sets and only one handle. So we recommend that two blades are used in a set. Um, moving on to uh, other St. Mark's retractors, this is a flat blade design, as you can see. The beauty about the flat blade is it actually dispenses with tissue uh, a little bit easier than what the uh, standard St. Mark, the concavity on the St. Mark's uh, does. Uh, these have detachable fibre lights as well and also incorporate the, uh, the triple fitting for the fibre light cable. Uh, that's a 30 degree angle and we also do these in 45 degree angles also. Moving on to the standard St. Mark's, uh, this is a 60 by 19. As you can see, box standard, has uh, been around many, many years, but it's still one of the preferred instruments for working in the pelvis. We do a, a full range of St. Mark's. Um, this is another one which is the deep curve. As you can see, the curvature on that blade, obviously for bladder retraction, uh, gives the assisting surgeon a real good control. As we know, the bladder is one of the worst things that the colorectal surgeon has to cope with uh, when he's trying to work deep in the pelvis. This St. Mark's um, is slightly different. As you can see, it has an elevated tip on there. Uh, fibre light as well with the same fitting. As I said, there's a host of St. Mark's retractors to suit, to suit every uh, colorectal surgeon's wish. This is uh, the 80 millimetre wide, so we do do uh, extra wide ones as well as extra deep ones. So that's the 80 by, by the 26 centimetre, without a light of course. Uh, another favoured retractor of the colorectal world and the general surgery and indeed gynaecology is the Golliger retractor. Uh, this comes with two sets of post-lateral blades and two sets of lateral blades. Uh, incidentally, we also do extra deep blades for this particular retractor also. So should that be the case anywhere, uh, Boltons can actually uh, can make that. Uh, this has just got the standard, the standard spread and relies on its pressure on the blades to actually hold, hold the system open. But uh, a very nice retractor still today and very widely used. Um, looking now to uh, rectal examination. Um, this is the uh, European pattern uh, Hill Ferguson retractor with detachable fibre light. This co actually comes, can be bought separately, but does come in a set of three. This is the smallest, there's a medium and there's a large one. Uh, obviously these are to view on the website or in the catalogue. Moving on to the Parks Anal Retractor. Uh, this instrument is obviously a very old style of instrument, but nevertheless comes with two sets of interchangeable blades. 
and also an adjustable centre blade. Uh, moving on to the Eisenhammer retractor. Uh, one key development in this particular retractor was that um, uh, when we took over the colorectal range, uh, these were all screw operated, which was slightly cumbersome, could be tiresome for the surgeon also. So what we did, we put a ratchet on. So that makes life a lot easier for the colorectal surgeon to uh, do a rectal examination, as you can see. And these are very, very popular. That is the 70 millimeter uh, blade. And then we do another one with the 115 millimeter, which is that one. But this one has actually got a third blade also, as you can see how that operates. Yeah. Also with a detachable fiber light. Uh, the beauty about the third blade is when you actually introduce the, the lateral blades in, into the anal canal, uh, it tends to pull the mucosa. So viewing tends to get, can, be, can become difficult. The third blade will actually give you a better view. Not everyone's choice, but uh, something we introduced a couple of years ago, and I must admit this uh, third blade did prove to be a success. I'd like to show you a retractor uh, that certainly caused some interest this last couple of years. Um, I was called in to uh, see Professor Bill Heald of the Pelican Centre in Hampshire uh, in the UK to look at uh, developing uh, a retractor to encompass the mesorectum during, during bowel excision. Uh, and what we came up, up with was, was this particular device, which is a reverse concavity St. Mark's. If you look at the conventional St. Mark's, you've got the concavity that way. On this retractor, it's the opposite way, as you can see. The beauty about this retractor is that when, you work, when the surgeon's working their way down to the pelvic floor, it makes life easier because the, the mesorectum has a tendency to slip around with the conventional St. Mark's. But with this particular retractor, it encompasses the mesorectum making life a lot easier for the colorectal surgeon. Available in two sizes. That's the long one, that's the short one. They start at six centimeter widths, but these actually go up to 80, uh, 80 millimeters. Um, so there, there is quite a, a selection available of this particular retractor. I'll just light one of these up for you so you can see the effectiveness of the fiber light. All these fiber lights are detachable also. You can see the amount of power that comes through that light, yeah? Obviously incorporating the triple fitting uh, cable connector there. Um, I'd like to just show you um, diathermy forceps, which obviously extra long again. There's two scenarios here. Uh, as you can see, uh, fully insulated monopolar forceps. That's a standard tip, dissecting tip. This one has a debakey jaw on the end there. So obviously for heavy tissue dissection and cauterization, ideal for that job. Uh, these are always available in, uh, in different lengths. In the colorectal world, we're talking 30 centimeter upwards, up to 30, 36 centimeters. And we've even done these forceps at 40 centimeters. Extra long suction tubes to pull sucker. Uh, this one's insulated. Obviously, one thing we don't want to be doing is burning the patient. So uh, this is fully insulated to our class 2B. Just to give you some idea on the amount of work that is involved in producing a retractor like this, this is how the raw material actually starts out. So as you can see, there's a lot of labor intensive work going on there. This has been a very small selection of the colorectal range and it's been my pleasure to introduce it today.